and we're going to get real legitimate answers based on real ballistic gel as to how this bullet actually performs. And we're also going to test against conventional ammo because how do you they're saying they're going to change the ballistics industry with this uh, that it that it acts like no other bullet so I'm going to put it up against conventional ammo and put it up against federal premium HST this is a premium round this is the state of the art in conventional hollow points so we'll see how this does I'm going to test it in bare gelatin going to test it through four layers of denim we're going to test it through plywood because one of the claims that G2 makes is that this you know if you look at the front of the bullet here and the tiny little uh, spikes they say that this will act like a hole saw and just saw through barriers and it's I can tell you right now that's absolutely not what it's going to do uh, it can't saw through a barrier because the twist rate of a nine millimeter rifle barrel or a nine millimeter pistol barrel is about one twist for 10 inches. So the bullet would have to travel a full 10 inches before it made even one rotation. So if it's gonna go through three quarters of an inch of plywood, it's probably only gonna rotate maybe one trocars or so, you know, come on, that's ridiculous. There's a lot of claims on their site that I think are, are way overstating their case, but what I think and what really is may not necessarily be the same thing. Why don't we actually find out? This next test is through IWBA standard four layers of heavy denim. This is 16 ounces per square yard, heavy, heavy denim, not normal denim. We shoot through four layers and we see how the bullets perform. We'll try the HST and the G2 rip through both. Here's the result of the four layers of denim test. Now, I used a clear ballistics gel block on this test because I was out of the organic gel. I'd use that on the other test. But the fact that both bullets were put into the exact same gel block should give us perfectly representational performance how they did against each other. And they both did exactly what they were supposed to do. The HST is a textbook perfect case of expanding and traveling to 16 inches through four layers of denim. Ideal. The G2 expanded just like it's supposed to. The trocars all ripped off. They created a cavity that is about three and a half inches across at its maximum point and penetrated to about four inches at the most. It looks impressive in a gel block, but penetrating four inches is so minimal that it's likely it wouldn't even get past the bones. I mean, it, this would create a nasty superficial wound, but what counts is what happens towards the end of penetration, when the bullet has reached towards the vital organs. And here's a case where we see that we have the HST and the G2 both penetrated deeply, both penetrated deep enough to potentially cause an incapacitating hit. The difference is, the HST bullet is a lot bigger than the little small uh, truncated base of the G2 bullet and will do more damage where it counts. The G2 did a bunch of surface damage up here where the HST didn't bother. The HST is doing all its damage deep within the body where it counts, whereas the G2 doesn't have that much left over. It's just got the small little base to reach that portion. Next test, through a three quarter inch sheet of plywood into ballistic gel. I don't know what kind of wood I have here. It may not be exactly the same fur as the FBI specifies, but in any case, it will be the same wood for a G2 as for HST. So we'll still be able to get a comparison of exactly how it performs. This is my fifth shot on the G2 rip and it had a failure to feed in the Glock 19. I'm showing you this wide shot so you can see where the HSTs ended up. Uh, they failed to expand and they made it through the plywood, sure. They made it through 22, 23 inches of gel as well. The G2 rip bullet did smash through the plywood. It didn't cut through like a hole saw, of course, but it did smash through. And it did expand some, but it not like it's designed to do. 
it actually looks like more like a conventional hollow point in there. It looks like maybe three of the trocars broke off and penetrated separately. Having the extra material stay attached to the bullet did slow it down, so it only penetrated about nine and a quarter inches. Uh, that said, at least it didn't overpenetrate like the HSTs did, so neither round performed the way they were supposed to. This last test is a ridiculous over-the-top test, but it's one of the claims that G2 is making, so hey, let's put it to the test. They are saying that their round will perform the same through 12 layers of denim as it does through no barrier, that, that it will rip through 12 layers of denim like it's not even there and it won't affect the behavior of their round. So let's fire it through 12 layers of IWBA specification denim and we'll also send a federal HST through those same 12 layers into that same gel block. You can see that all the petals broke off. The base penetrated to about 14 and a quarter inches. The size of that initial cavity is about two and three quarters inches across and it runs up to about six inches. So from you know half an inch to six inches is, is where that happens. So you have a lot of activity in a very shallow region and then it strips down to being just the little bullet, but you know it performed the same through 12 layers of denim as it did with no denim whatsoever. So that part, it definitely met their claim. Uh, the HST, you can see the bottom track, it just, clogged with denim and passed straight through. It did not pass a 12 layer of denim test. To be fair, 12 layers is an extreme test and it, it wouldn't pass that. But, uh, you know, G2 threw down that gauntlet and yes, they did pass it and the HST didn't. The center core of the bullet pretty much weighs 48 to 49 grains and the trocars pretty much weigh, you know, 5.9 to 6.1 grains, so about six grains. So the question really comes up to, when you're looking at terminal performance, these tow cars, they all disappear, you know, early on three inches, four inches, and they're done. They're, they're not reaching anything deep. So what reaches deep? It really becomes a comparison of that against that. Now, when it comes time for that bullet to reach the vital organs, which do you think is going to do more damage? Which do you think is going to be the more effective stopper? Which one is going to hit the heart and which one is going to miss because it was too small and it snuck between the heart and an artery versus this thing which will reach out and hit it. Now when we did the plywood test my results are different from what we would have expected. Look at this thing. The trocars did not break off so we end up with a conventional looking expanded hollow point. I like that much better. Right? Look at this thing. It's like if this hit you, if this landed in you Boy, that's nasty. It's way bigger than what an HST would be. That would be really something. But that's not what happened. You know, this stopped at nine and a half inches. So it, it stopped well short of where it should have gone. Still, the HSTs, you know, they just choked. This one still has a big chunk of plywood in it. Uh, and they overpenetrated. So as far as straight terminal performance, you get a lot of whiz-bang flash with these trocars, but I don't think you get anything substantial, any real terminal performance, because it's, it's happening too shallow. Three to four inches of ballistic gel, that's just way too shallow. Final wrap-up. Is this the last round you'll ever need? Uh, no, in fact, I think it's the last round I'd ever want. I don't believe in it. I have tested it and it does not perform the way I want defensive ammo to perform, the way the experts say that you want defensive ammo to perform. I'm not gonna say it's useless. I do think that if you put your aim properly, it could maybe do the job, but I know that other ammo could do the job better. So choose what you want, carry what you want, but this is not for me. Stay tuned and hit subscribe, and thanks for watching.